Hello once again. So this is another video um, which presents the the second descriptive second set of descriptive measures in a statistic and this is the measures of position or we often called it as quantiles okay under this measure of position um, we will talk about quartile we will talk about decile and we will talk about percentile in our pre in, in my previous video presentation i we have already discussed about the median and this median under measure of center measures of central tendency under this median um, it is actually related to these positions because uh, when we say median, this is the center with regards to the positioning of the or uh, the arrangement of the the with respect to the arrangement of the data. So ganon din dito sa position natin. However, in the median, we are dividing the data into two equal parts. Okay, yung yung division ng two equal parts na yan on that particular data set that is the median. Now, if our focus or if our purpose is, is to divide, is to divide the data into four equal, equal parts, there will be three divisions, okay? This will be um, the quartiles, alright? So, this will be the quartiles. So, let's say, for example, ito yung arrangement ng data mo, and you want to divide, you want to divide this data in, into two equal parts, so, titignan mo yung pinakagitna. Yun yung magiging division niya. And this represents the, the median. Okay? This represents the median. Now, if you have another scenario, or considering the same, considering the same line, considering the same data set, and you want to divide this data set into four equal parts. Okay? Into four, four equal parts. So, ang gagawin mo, you will identify yung mga yung tatlong sorry you will identify the three divisions of these four equal parts um, assuming you were divided or you you have already divided the data into four equal parts and itong tatlong line na ito yung itong horizon yung vertical line na ito these are now what we call the quartiles okay these are what we call the quartiles which is the, the first measure of position tool. Okay? Another one is what if we want to divide this data set into 10 portions, 10 equal parts. Okay, 10 equal parts. So this will be the 10 equal portions of this particular data sets. But if you count, kung ilan yung divisions ng sampung equal um, equal parts ng, ng data set na yan, it will be 9. And this 9, which are the divisions of these 10 equal parts, will be called the deciles. Okay? Will be called the deciles. Considering the third one, percentile ang tawag natin sa kanya. From the word percentile, percentile means it, we are referring to 100. Okay? We are referring to 100. Bakit desal ang tawag sa D? Itong, itong third scenario na ito kasi we are dividing the data set into 10. Kasi kapag decil, de, decagon, 10, 10 yan. Diba? It represents 10. Pag quartile naman, we are dividing into 4. So, quartile means 4. Median means half. Okay? Itong, itong, itong P naman or percentile, we are dividing the data into 100 equal parts. And ilan ngayon yung percentile, ilan ngayon yung divisions ng 100 equal parts na yan? It will be 99. So, itong mga lines na ito, makakabuo ka na 99 divisions. And itong 99 divisions na ito, these are what we call the percentiles. Okay? So, let's go back with the PowerPoint presentation. So, these are the three measures of positions that we will be dealing with for this video clip presentation. Okay, there are also um, just like in the measures of central tendency, we can also find um, these tools for ungrouped data and for group data. Okay, so we will concentrate first to the <coughs> ungrouped data. 
So parang ito yung presentation ko kanina when I have drawn the the scenarios in in my notepad. So ito yung yung magiging scenarios nila. So um, ang pre-present dito is the median which corresponds to quartile 2 which also corresponds to D5 and equal to P50 or percentile 50. Itong itong apat na ito they have the same values. Okay? So kapag sinabi natin D5, madali lang um, um, alamin yan. It's just the, the median of that particular distrib distribution. We can also say that is the quartile 2 of that particular distribution or the percentile 50 of that particular distribution. And itong quartile 3 natin in the quartile, okay, it, it, will, it will correspond to the 75 percentile or 75th percentile. Or percentile 75, okay? So that will correspond to that. And for your quartile 1, okay, it will correspond to percentile 25. So yun yan, okay? Yun yung ina-emphasize dito. Now, if, if your target is to differentiate or to look for the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1 by, by simply subtracting them, okay? Subtract them ka no? You just subtract quartile 3 and quartile 1, the result will be called as the interquartile range. I repeat, interquartile range ang tawag natin sa result na yan. If we will subtract Q3 and Q1. Okay? Take note of that. So, this will be the two ways. Okay? This will be the two ways in finding the, the measures of positions, okay? Whether quartile, decile, or percentile for ungrouped data. We have the Mendenhall and Sinich method, and we can, we can also use the linear interpolation. I repeat, these are applied for ungrouped data only, okay? Now, um, take note that these methods um, sometimes but not always produce the same result. Kung sino yung ginamit mo, wala. Respeto yan. Um, hindi pwedeng sabihin ni nung isa na wrong. Kasi it is possible na hindi sila magkaparehas ng value. Okay? Um, pero in terms of, depende, depende kasi sa, inyo, sa iyo, kung ano yung gusto mo. If, if, if you prefer to, to have values na talagang accurate or if you prefer values na nakikita mismo, mismo doon sa data. Okay? Kasi kapag accurate ko na, ilalabas niya impossible, meron siyang decimal number. However, kapag gusto mo makikita mo yung, yung answer mo on that particular data set, um, whole number na yan. So, kapag whole number yung data set mo and uh, sino kaya sa kanila ang, 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 ang gusto mong gamitin. So, it's up to you. Okay? Pero ang sinasabi dito, Posible kasi na magbibigay sila ng different results. Okay? Posible yan. So, it's up to you kung ano yung gusto mong gagamitin na lang. Okay? So, the similarity of the mendenhall sinich method and the linear interpolation is the process, okay? The process of arranging the data. Okay? We need to arrange the data in an ascending in order. Parehas yan nagagawin in the Mendenhall and Sinich method and linear interpolation method. And they, we will be using similar or same formula or formulae in finding the positions. Now, take note, guys, that if you have find out or found out the, the, the positions of that particular data set with, res, with respect to decile, percentile, and, and, and quartile, they, these are not yet. These are not yet the values of the decile percentiles and the quartiles. These are just the positions of this decile and quartiles and percentiles that you are looking. Okay. So parehas lang yung gagamitin nating formulae in in finding the positions. So ito yung similarities ng dalawang formulae na ito, the Mendenhall and Sinich method and the linear interpolation method. However, the difference is the process of choosing the values. Okay, mag-iiba yan mag sila, then sometimes the values themselves. So as what I'm saying, it is possible oftentimes that these two formulae will give you different values or different results. So ito yung difference ng Mendenhall and Sinich method 
the, or differences ng Mendenhall and Sinich method and the linear interpolation method. The process of choosing the value and the value themselves. Okay, let's, let's have the formulae in finding the positions. Yung similarity nila kanina. So, itong una, or itong pangalawang similarity, the same formula in finding the positions, this will be the formula, or this will now be the formula in, in, in finding the values of this quartile, or the position of these values of under quartile, decile, and percentile for and group data. Okay. Now, take note that using this method, upper quartile or the Q3 and the lower quartile or the Q1 were always uh, are always two of the data elements, okay? So, itong this K represents the position. Kung ano yung gusto mong tignan, say, your target is to look for quartile 3, therefore, itong K na to in the quar under quartile, that, re that will represent 3. It means you are looking for quartile 3. Now, if you are looking for quartile 1, then this K will be equal to 1, okay? So, palitan mo lang yung K as 1, kapag kinukuha mo ay yung position ni quartile 1. And itong n na ito, this will represent the total number of, of sample. Okay? So, ganun din dito sa decile and percentile, k will still represent the position of that particular quart or decile or percentile. Say, you are looking for decile 7, therefore 7 will be equal or k will be equal to 7 on that case. We are looking for decile 8, then k will be 8. Just change the value of k as 8. Now, if you are looking for percentile 60, um, yung k natin dyan under percentile will be equal to 60. Ganun lang yun. Palitan mo lang. Kung ano yung position na gustong malaman, kung anong quartal yung gusto mong malaman, yun yung bagiging value ng ating k. Alright? In the formula. So, take note of this um, formula or formula in finding the the positions of the values. So, going back to this formulae, as you can see, yung mga denominators doon sa formulae. Meron kang denominator, under quartile, meron kang denominator na 4. Why? Because you are dividing it into 4. Ito namang nasa decile, you are dividing it into 10. Kaya, ang, ang, decima, ang, ang, de, ang denominator ng ating formula is 10. Um, also, in the percentile, the denominator is 100 since you are dividing the data into 100%. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin kung bakit nag-iba yung mga denominators dyan. Okay? Take note of that. So, let's apply now. So, let's, given, given this um, example, data set, 1, 3, 7, 7, 16, 21, 27, 30, and 31. Um, we want to compute. Say, for example, we want to compute for quartile 1 and quartile 3. So, in order for you to compute for quartile 1 and quartile 3, you need to identify first the positions of this quartile 1 and quartile 3. Applicable yan both Mendenhall and Sinich method. Okay? So, dependent on madamdama kung anong gagawin mong method, basta ang importante, magawa mo muna ito before you will, you will compute for quartile 1 and quartile 3. So, these are just the positions of quartile 1 and quartile 3, applicable to both Mendenhall and, and linear interpolation methods. Okay? So, for quartile 1, since we are looking for quartile 1, your k will be equal to 1, okay? And your n is equal to 9, since there are 9 elements in that particular data set, okay? Then, simplify the formulae, we will be having 2.5. Okay, 2.5. So, ano itong 2.5 na to? This 2.5 is not yet the value of your quartile 1. This is just the position of your quartile 1. So, among this, saan mo makikita si 2.5? Yan yung magiging concern natin later on. Okay? Under Q3 or quartile 3, we will be changing the value of your K to be equal to 3 and your N is still to be 9. Simplifying the values, we have... Um, 7.5 or we will derive with a 7.5 position. So, where is 7.5 position on that particular data set? Now, take note guys that it is very important to arrange the data in an ascending manner. Okay? 
kasi dito positions ang ibig ang ang, ang tinitingnan natin dito kasi kapag random random yung arrangement we cannot find the position the exact position so ang importante diyan guys is we need to um arrange the data first in an ascending order before you will identify the the values of these um, positions okay so quartile 1 ang position niya is 2.5 Quartile 3, ang position niya is 7.5. Okay? So, let's continue. Okay? So, we have... Wait lang. So, ito. So, nandito tayo kanina, ngayon, we will go to the next slide. We will first do the Mendenhall and Sinich method. Okay? So, this will be the, 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 the process of using or in, on, on, on using the Mendenhall and Sinich method. Okay? So, we need to recall that the computed quartile 1 position is 2.5. We need to round up it to be 3. Yun yung process ng Mendenhall and Sinich. And itong 7 natin, we cannot round up. Yun yung tandaan natin, okay? So, if, if that will be rounded up to 3, titignan mo ngayon yan, asan yung third element? Ano yung third element? So, this will be the, the element, okay? Itong 7 na ito, itong first 7 na ito, that will be the, 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 the quartile 1. Okay? That will be the value of your quartile, quartile 1. Yung first 7. Okay? Yung unang 7 na yan. That is the value of the quartile 1 kasi siya yung pang third na elements on that particular data set. Kasi ang ginawa ni Mendenhall and Sinich method, he rounded up the, the value of the position which is 2.5 into 3. Okay? Yun yung ginawa niya. Kasi kapag 2.5, we cannot identify where is the location of that 2.5. Okay? So, 2.5 is located between the second and the third element. So, hindi natin yan makikita in the Mendenhall and Sinich method. Kaya ang ginagawa often time ni Mendenhall is na nagra-round up siya or nagra-round down. Okay? Para makakuha siya ng, ng whole number as the, as the position, number of position. So, since we are in quartile 1, we rounded up 2.5 into 3. Okay? And yung third and this 3 will represents now third element on that given arrangement of data which is yung first 7 natin. Yung unang 7 siya yung magiging siya yung na, nasa third element. So therefore that will be the, the the value of your quartile 1. I hope you understood, okay? This this um, presentation. Then, for the quartile 3, since in quartile 3 kanina, we computed it, uh, we, have a, we derive a value of 7.5, pero nasa quartile 3 ka kasi. So, if you round up, magiging 8 position yan. So, kapag in round up mo suna, uh, agad just DJ position. Iso nga, ang, kapag 0.5 yung decimal number natin in the Mendenhall and Sinich method, and we are in the quartile 3, Ang ginagawa dyan, hindi nagra-round up. We round down the value of that 7.5. So, that will become 7. We will not round up to 8. Kasi kapag 8, that will be un, uh, um, adjusted. So, hindi na yan magiging equal. So, yun yung, yun, yung, yun yung rule ni Mendenhall and Sinich method. If you are in the quartile 3, do not round up 0.5 or 7.5 as 8. Just round down it if you are in quartile 3. Saka ka lang magra-round up kapag nasa quartile 1 ka. If, if the decimal part is 0.5. Okay? So, instead of having the position to be 8 in the quartile 3, um, we rounded it down to be 7. Okay? So, ang, gina ang gagawin natin dyan, we will now locate where is that 7th position. So, itong 7th element na ito, it will be 27. Okay? So, itong 27 now will be the third quartile value. This is the Mendenhall and Sinich method. Okay? So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na, na method if you want if you want to see 
the the if you want this values ay makikita natin mismo doon sa data set natin and ito nakita natin si 7 nandun sa data set si 27 nandun si kay kay data set so yun yung gusto ni Mendenhall dapat nakita niya yung mga values na ito on that particular data set okay so ito yung kanyang method now in the linear interpolation method naman so kanina the same yung ginawa natin Still, we have 2.5 as the quartile 1 position and 7.5 as the quartile 3 position. Okay? So, since the result, kunan na dito, mer merong note dyan. Since the results are decimal numbers, interpolating is needed. That's why we will call it as in linear interpolation. Okay? So, this will be the steps in interpolation. Okay? We need to subtract the second data from the third data. So the second data, as you can see, we have that um, three. Okay, that is the second data, and the third data natin it is it is seven. We need to subtract seven and three. Bakit? Bakit seven and three ang pinili natin? Kasi nand ito yung nas ito yung location ni two point five. Position, device si 2.5 position, it is located between the second and the third elements. So, we need to get it or we need to identify it by subtracting the third and the second elements. Kasi nandun siya. Okay? Then, after subtracting, we will, we will come up with um, a result of 4. That will now be the difference of the, the third element and the second element. Then, we will multiply this 4 by 0.5. Bakit 0.5? This is the decimal portion of that 2.5. Okay? Tanggalin nyo yung dec decimal portion ni 2.5 which is 0.5. I-multiply yo kay, kay 4 which is the difference of the third and the second um, elements. And we will come up with 2. Okay? We will come up with, with 2. So, this will now be the product of the difference and the, the decimal portion of this 2.5, itong 2.5 na ito, which is equal now to 2. Okay? Then, add the result in step 2 to the second smaller number. So, itong second smaller number natin, it is 3. Alright? It is 3. So, nandito, si 3 yan, yung second natin. I sum up tayo, we will sum up it with the result in step 2. Okay, that's why we we have 3 plus 2 which is equal to 5. So therefore, yung 5 natin is now be the result, is now be the value of your quartile 1 which is not located or which is not seen in the data set. Makita mo lang, makikita mo lang siya between or alam mo na makikita mo siya between 3 and 7 which is the second position and third position bakit kasi 2.5 it is located between two and uh, second and third position niya so nasa loob ng 3 and 7 yung ating quartile 1 so ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na hindi natin makikita yung possible na hindi natin makikita yung value ng quartile na yan on that particular data set and um, sino ang may pakananon it is si linear interpolation method Okay, mas reliable si linear interpolation method um, in terms of the value of the decile percentile kasi siya mismo yung magdi-divide into 4. Pero mas maganda naman si Mendenhall kasi makikita mo mismo among this data set sino si quartile 1, quartile 2 and quartile 3. All right? Now for the quartile 3, um, we will again do the first step, subtract 7 and 8. Bakit 7 and 8? Ba, kasi itong computed position niya is 7.5 So automatic makikita natin si 7.5 from the 7th and 8th position Nasa between 7 and 8th position si 7.5 That's why ang kinonsider natin dito is the 7th data or 7th element and the 8th element Alright? So considering the 7th element, it gives you 27 And 8th element, it gives you 30 so, just subtract again the 2. 30 minus 27, it will give you 3 as the difference. Okay? This 3 will be multiplied with the decimal portion okay, of that 7.5. I repeat, this 3 will be multiplied with the, seven, uh, the decimal portion of that 7.5 in the quartile 3 position. 
And we will come up with 1.5 value. Okay, 1.5. This 1.5 will be added with the lowest or lower, lower element from 7 and 8. So, ano yung lower dito? Pinaka-lower sa kanilang dalawa, it is 27. That's why we sum up 27 by the result 1.5. And therefore, the result will be equal to 28.5 and that will now be quartile 3 of this given data set using the linear interpolation method. Okay? Hindi pa rin siya nakikita dito sa data set. Nasa between 27 and 30. Okay? C 28.5. So, note, Mendenhall and Sinich method and linear interpolation are still applicable for decile and, and percentile. So, the same lang yung process. Palitan nyo lang yung formula ng position niyo. The same yung process nila. Okay? In picking up their values. So, for your activity, for today's meeting under this lesson, you need to, to answer this question. Problem exercise, you will find quartile 1, quartile 3, decile 3, decile 7, percentile 32, and percentile, percentile 46, and percentile 76. Um, the first thing to do, you need to arrange the data set in an array form, um, uh, especially in, 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 in an ascending manner. Okay, So this will be your third activity for today's meeting. Thank you again for watching to my video. Um, Please watch for my next video clip presentation which will focus on the quartile or fo uh, focus on the measures of position under group data. Okay? So as of this time, ito lang muna yung co coverage ng video na ito up to ungroup data lang. So don't forget to answer the, the problem exercise given to you. Thank you and have a good day.